Hey everybody, Brian from PB Homesteading. Wanted to give the update for the salad bar LED area and uh, some interesting little pop ups here coming out of the uh, worm compost. Let me grab the camera. So, using, when you use worm compost, they don't digest the seeds. And so, if you have seeds in there and they're left sitting around, a lot of times you get some weird germination of some interesting plants. And I mean, a lot of you guys will probably recognize what those leaves are. Those are from the uh, cucurbit family of cucumber type plants. So I'm assuming these are probably cucumber seeds. So I don't think we have any squash seeds that would have went through here. So I'm gonna see if these will actually be cucumbers. It'd be kind of interesting to see these cucumbers pop up along with my uh, my chard. And uh, just let them kind of go in here and see how they do. And uh, you can see the, uh, the chard in here is really loving the soil being a deeper, deeper mix. I mean, you can see there's lots of leaves to harvest off in here. We've harvested off once this week in here already, and uh, looks like it's time to do another one. And over here in the chard, this is the Silverado chard. I mean, it's just going gangbusters in here. I harvested off twice this week, this past week in here, and it's ready to go again. So this is gonna be a really, really good, uh, if you guys wanna grow chard, I recommend getting some of this Silverado chard and taking it and putting it into your indoor grow, because it is really, I mean, we, we harvested off this and we've had two two meals where Paula has sauteed this and mixed it with like a, one night we had a, uh, a blackened steak and then I think we had a fish. It wasn't fish, no, it was chicken. It was like a blackened chicken, some kind of a Cajun type uh, mix on it. I don't know, I'm not a cook. Uh, but you can see here's the, uh, the sprouts, they're coming up. Looks like I need to give it a little more water. Some of them are kind of falling over in there, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I mean, this when, when these get growing, I mean, we're going to, with both of these trays in here, I mean, that is a huge amount of chard. And if I take these out and get them established in the yard, because we're already going to have, I mean, you got to figure this is a six to six inch deep tray. We're going to have that much root mass to bury down in the ground, and that should really take off, especially if I put some good amendments and some nice compost underneath that, you know, this spring, and put it in an area where it's not going to get beaten to death with the, uh, the hot sun, I should be able to get a really nice established uh, chard bed to go all the way through next winter and I'll just, you know, put over some, uh, you know, some kind of a frost covering or something like that to keep the heaviest of the, the winter off if we do get to have any, you know, kind of ice or snow and I should be able to get this chard to come back year after year for quite a few years. I mean, you know, people down in Texas tell me that uh, they've got chard coming back for their second, third years and they really get beaten by the heat. They're using like some kind of a shade cloth or something like that over the top of it to keep it from really, you know, getting beat down. But, you know, if I can get something to keep growing outside and give me free food, that's all the better. All right. This has been Brian from P&B Homesteading. I'll talk to you guys again. All right. Bye.